Hi, everyone, and welcome to our introduction to Material Ledger and SAPS for HANA. We're here with the author, Paul Avigel, and he's going to tell us a little about the book. Paul is the founder of the consulting platform ERP Fixers and has over 25 years of experience as an SAP Financials Consultant. Welcome, Paul. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Allison. Good to be here. Uh, so let's start off with an overview of the book. Uh, what is it about? Well, the book is about Material Ledger and S4 HANA. Um, it is, Material Ledger is normally a topic that SAP users find to be pretty complicated and they don't want to be either pretty nervous about implementing it or nervous about um, what, how it would change their whole SAP processes. So I wanted to write the book just to break down all the different functionality of Material Ledger and how you can methodically set it up and use it and also kind of uh, communicate that you don't need the whole material material ledger suite in order to implement material ledger you can select which piece of it you want to use and then just use that piece if that fits your business requirement so i cover things in the book like um, configuration of material ledger um, how to use it for actual costing how to report on it, and some new functionality as well that could be useful to customers. Awesome. So what are some key things readers will learn? Uh, so there's several things, and just my approach generally, there were two kind of approaches I had. One was to make sure I covered everything, every standard SAP functionality for Material Ledger, but also to cover things that I learned while on an SAP project of Material Ledger, which you can't easily find when you Google it um, or you research it elsewhere. These were things that I actually discovered, hey, you know, the system can actually do this. So it's a mixture of both, you know, just try to get them kind of a good foundation for Material Ledger and, you know, talk about, we talk about actual costing, parallel valuation, um, balance sheet valuation, stock in transit, reporting in Fiori, and in the SAP GUI, and then some other tips and tricks for how to use certain things in Material Ledger that are not widely known. So since this is a new edition, what's the difference between the second edition and the first edition? That's a good question. So the first edition I wrote in 2018, it was based on the S4 HANA version 1809. The second edition is based on the S4 HANA version 2021. So three years apart, and as you know, in the, in the, in the IT field and the software field, things kind of, kind of accelerate pretty quickly. So there's some changes uh, between 2021 and, and, and 2018, and also um, some new functionality such as uh, stock in transit. I've added that to the book. It wasn't in the first edition. I've also added how to configure working process for group valuation and profit center valuation. I've also um, included some enhancements for the alternative valuation run and also for retrospect retroactively activating the actual cost component split. So, so new, so new, just in, to summarize, the system is new. It's a different release and some new functionality that I, we talk about that's not in the first book. Awesome. So you've written a few titles for SAP Press. What was the writing process like for this book? So this book was, first of all, it was, the, it, it was my, it's my first second edition uh, with SAP Press. So it's not, the amount of effort is not as much as the first book, but, you still have, and what I did, I don't know if every author does this, but because every screen that is shown in the book, I had to reinvent or recreate the data that's needed for that screen. So with an SAP book, different from if you're writing a, another book, like a, you know, a non-tech book or a, non, um, a book that's maybe just for, for recreation or for other things, you, the writing is the hard process. So you have that here, but you also have creating that data. And sometimes if you want to show just one screen in SAP, it could take hours to get that data in order to show that one screen. So it was, it was pretty 
Um, it did take quite quite a lot of time, but what I did, the way I did it, I did it for the first book too. I one hour every day. I made sure, no matter what happened, I made sure I put away one hour to write the book for several months. So I think that consistency and that discipline helped me get through the book within the deadline. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you recall a favorite part about writing the book, or a least favorite part? So my favorite part, actually. It's my favorite about writing any book. It's for for SAP for SAP Press is knowing that certain things I have in the book will be very useful to customers. So as a, an SAP consultant myself, I work with a lot of customers, and I always hear the I hear about pain points, and I always take them into account and say, you know, um, even if with my customer I can tell them what the solution is, but to other SAP customers that I've never seen, I have no involvement with, is good knowing them and imparting that knowledge to them as well. And um, so that was my favorite part. Just even even in when things when it was tough to get things out, that kind of motivated me because it told me that listen, this is helping you know people all around the world. And I have had you know with the first edition, you know, then I got to tell you what motivates me is the number of comments I get from people. Where through LinkedIn or whatever, saying, "Hey, listen, this book helped me out. You don't know how this was great." It, I didn't expect that for a tech book, right? <laughs> this is not a self-help book or whatever. This is just a tech book. Just so hearing that it does help people out is very motivating. Least favorite part of writing the book, I, I think it really was just you know after a full day of working, and now I have to spend that time to write the book. That part. You know, I need to, I needed to remember why I'm writing the book in order to get through that. Yeah, that's fantastic. One more question I have for you is if there's a specific tip from the book you'd like to share. Uh, there's, there's a lot of tips, but one that um, one I will mention because it I, I have been asked this, so I, I know that this is a, a, an issue a lot of customers have is that if you want to that you can report profitability by plant or profit center for intra-company transactions so just if one plant sends inventory to a different plant and they're within the same company code using material ledger's profit center valuation you can have revenue recorded in each plant right without material ledger you'll have to have some custom way of doing this but Material Ledger's Profit Center Valuation allows you to do that without having any custom code. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing these details about the book. It was really great having you. Great, great talking to you, Allison. Great sharing, sharing the information. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be working with SAP Press. Thank you very much.